Hi, I'm Dr. Tala, a board certified neonatologist. Often when I'm examining a baby and I reach the baby's lumbosacral area, often I will find some sort of abnormal marking. I mean, here we've got a massive dimple, but you might also see like a little lump or like some sort of birthmark or something. And immediately you start wondering, should I be investigating this further? Because sometimes what we're worried about is that an external skin marking could indicate that the baby has something going on with the neural tube inside. And the baby could have what we call an occult spinal dysraphism, which is basically some sort of abnormality in the spinal cord that could end up with tethered cord syndrome. What we're going to cover very quickly today is which skin markings puts the baby at high, intermediate or low risk for actually having something wrong with the spinal cord and potentially having tethered cord syndrome. And depending how much risk that skin lesion has, that will determine what you do next, whether it's an MRI, an ultrasound, or basically nothing. If you see any of these on exam, then these are considered high risk and it is recommended that you go straight to an MRI because it's going to be very high yield for these lesions. So high risk includes if you see two or more lesions on the back. So for example, you see a skin tag and a birthmark or a dimple as well as a mass, then that immediately is high risk. Also, if you see a lipoma, which is going to be like this soft, fatty mass covered by skin, or if you see a skin tag or even kind of like a pseudo tail on the baby, if there is cutis aplasia, a dermoid cyst or a dermoid sinus. So a dermoid sinus is when you have like a really deep pit and you actually see kind of yellow stuff or a hair draining from it. An infantile hemangioma is considered high risk if it's above 2.5 centimeters in diameter. Like I said, for all of those, go straight to an MRI. The intermediate risk group includes infantile hemangiomas that are less than 2.5 centimeters in diameter, areas of hypertrichosis, or like a hairy patch. Remember, a lot of babies have a lot of hair in that lower sacral area, but in this case, the hair is kind of normally in a V-shaped pattern and the hairs themselves are longer and a lot silkier. So that's when you should be more concerned. Atypical dimples are also considered to be intermediate risk. An atypical dimple is when the dimple is larger than 0.5 centimeters, so above five millimeters, or the dimple is more than 2.5 centimeters away from the anal verge. So that would make it an atypical dimple. If the babies are in an intermediate risk, then you could either get an MRI or an ultrasound depending on your institution, but should probably get some level of imaging. The low risk group includes areas of hyper or hypopigmentation, so just darker or kind of paler skin, also port wine stains and melanocytic nevi. The other really key low risk group are the simple dimples. It is considered a simple dimple if the dimple is less than five millimeters in diameter and it's less than 2.5 centimeters away from the anal verge. That is considered a simple dimple and you don't have to do any imaging for any of these babies in this low risk group. Obviously, even in this low risk group, there is a chance that the baby could have an occult spinal dysraphism. But the percentage is so low that really at that point, we might as well be getting ultrasounds on just about every single baby. So if you do see that, point it out to the parents, tell them why you are not concerned about, uh, concerned about it, and also make sure that you document it in your notes. I hope you learned something. There are a lot more details in the full video that we made on occult spinal dysraphisms. If you reached that far, please like this video and consider joining our channel membership so that you can help us decide which videos we're going to stream next. Thank you so much for being here.